Manus flat on the canvas. We are ready to rock and roll. Second round of action. There is a cut on Manus. Yeah. It's Jesus. My man B Hop got knocked out, dropped out the ring last night. I need a little judo baby. I need me a little judo baby. And let's do it, Ronda. Let's do it. You see what they me next? You got face for me, too. I got face for me. That's nice. Martial Lodge. Chat. Martial Lodge. Hello, welcome to Martial Lodge Chat Podcast. The round table is back. And it's been far too long. We're getting set to look ahead to UFC 239. Massive card next weekend. Headlined by the late heavyweight champion... The Martial GOAT man, Johnny Bone Jones, who defends against Thiago Santos. Later in the show, we'll be answering fan questions. Thank you for those who got in touch. Um, remember, continue hitting me up uh, during International Fight Week. It's facebook.com forward slash martial arts chat or on Twitter, I'm at martial arts chat as well. Still not on the Instagram, still lazy on that department, but I'm working on it, guys. Before I introduce tonight's panel, just a quick shout out to the sponsors A1 Fight Gear. A1 Fight Gear use the latest cutting edge boxing gloves for professional and amateur fighters, gym enthusiasts, and kickboxers. So, local and national gyms in the UK, do sales a favour, check out a1fightgear.com. If you want to get in shape, get back any shape or just keep trimming the fat off go to bskier.co.uk and if you do that and use the coupon code martial arts chat you'll see 15 percent off any purchases there for go sliders straps barbell pads different strength and conditioning programs at different levels to suit your needs so beast your goals with bskier.co.uk we're also sponsored by fuel supreme FuelSupreme.co.uk offer CBD oil and natural nutrition. They will assist your diet, lifestyle, natural supplements and complementary services such as yoga, mind coaching and weight cutting programs. I've just tried the old CBD oil myself. Uh, our, our friends over there sorted me out this week, man. Yeah, it feels like it does the business for the old inflammation, but I mean, I don't know if they've got flavours for this shit because it's fucking disgusting, man. It tastes so bad. Um, maybe that's not a good plug, but yeah, check it out, man. It's, it's definitely helping me with the old... Um, I'm getting the old knees now for jiu-jitsu, so I would definitely recommend it. But finally, also sponsored by World of Martial Arts Television. Womo.tv produces, finds, acquires, commissions and presents all you ever wanted to know about martial arts. Discover techniques, exercises and forms from your favourite martial arts and explore martial art philosophies, health, culture and spirituality. So, to the panel here this evening, delighted to have them all back on. And to this gentleman, of course, firstly, it's from Purely MMA. It's my man, Mr. Matthew Penny. Matthew, how are you doing, sir? Yeah, I'm doing well, mate. Welcome back to the the podcasting world, mate. It's been far too long, so I hope you're feeling uh, refreshed and ready to get back into it. Huge card to come back into, so we're looking forward to it, mate. Definitely, and thanks, man. Appreciate it. Um, From iFox with Juice Podcast, it's my man, Mr. Victor Vargas. Victor, how are you doing, my friend? What's going on, uh, John? Doing all right here, doing all right. I'm glad to be back. Pleasure to have you on, brother. And finally, from the main event, my brother from another mother, Mr. Kevin Jones. Kevin, it wouldn't be a John Jones pay-per-view without you. How you doing, sir? Man, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling live. Yes, absolutely. John Jones and me, we are keeping busy this year. So <laughs> you might hear me more so than not. If he keeps fighting, I will keep appearing. That's it, man. And some predictions, if you please, gents, for this one. Um, let's uh, let's start with the welterweight division. Um, it's the awesome wrestling, of course, and Ben Askren. And he gets the old, uh, what is it, the three-piece and soda, Jorge Masvidal. I do wonder how it goes down, but I, I, I've kind of racked my brains over the weekend on this one. And I think uh, I think wrestling of Askren takes it from me. But let's see how the panel starts. We'll start with Victor on this one. Victor, how does it play out for you, amigo? Yeah, well, thank you for coming to me first, man. But, um, yeah, this is a fight I've, I've long awaited. Um, I don't know. It seems like everybody's been happy, uh, was excited for Askren's UFC debut. I wasn't so much because, you know, I didn't know who they'd p- pair him up with, but I didn't think he was going to do that good. And then the Robbie Lawler fight happened, and then he both won and lost in the same fight. And, uh, yeah, I, d- I didn't know what to make of all that. But uh, Jorge Masvidal has been one of my favorite fighters for a while now. I was on him before the whole three-piece in a soda stuff. And um, the only thing with him is that it's it's kind of hard to know if he's going to perform because he, you know, it, it reminds me a lot of the Damian Maya fight. He was on a hot streak, yeah, yeah, yeah. doing good. And then, you know, like, oh, I, I thought he was going to beat Maya. And it was a close fight, but, you know, he kept getting taken down. And But the thing is, you know, he had no problems with Maya. And Masvidal is not a dude that you want to fuck with. If you piss him off, I don't think he's going to become Cerrone. I think he's going to become Anderson Silva, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, and, uh, that backstage <laughs> fight as well, man. Here in the, in the UK, in London, right? That was the one we... Um, 
Yeah. Leon Edwards. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Super. Yeah. Yeah, man. The thing with with Masvidal is like I've seen these things with with Askren, these interviews. He's saying like, oh, he needs. They need to keep that idiot away from me. Like he's gonna basically saying he's gonna fuck it all up. He's gonna start fighting and in, in the back, and he's casting him out like he's some kind of thug or something. And he's just like some dumb, you know, street dude. But the thing is that he is a street dude, and he doesn't play that shit. And this is the thing with Askren is like he's an Olympian, mm-hmm. so he thinks like that's all the toughness he needs. It's like he's obviously hardworking, but. Yeah. Masvidal's got a different fire from a man, and it's like Joy Diaz says that immigrant mentality, man. That shit's for real. <laughs> yeah, man. A bit with, as with with Askin, I swear to God, this is just a random side note. But after that Robbie Lawler fight, uh, my girlfriend's also from Missouri. They're both from Missouri, and after that that fight, I seriously considered breaking up with her, man, just by proxy. <laughs> <laughs> but. That's that's beside the point. Uh, talking about the fight, um, yeah, I, I got Masvidal in this. Yes, this is a lot of me hoping he wins, but right. um, I, I seeing how good his boxing has improved, especially in the Till fight. If he stays to that game plan, if he kind of uh, tries to avoid so many kicks and just goes with the boxing he was doing in the Till fight, I, I think he can. I think he can hurt him. I mean, I'm gonna say it's a knockout because I think it's a tough, tough proposition to say he'll win a decision. But he was also saying he wants to take him three rounds and finish him at the end of the fight just to prove a point. But, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just say he knocks him out in the second round, maybe. Second round knockout. Interesting, mate. Kev, what about you? Who have you got working out the victor here? I'm kind of like you, John. Uh, I, when, I, when I visualize this fight in my head, I just see uh, Ben Askren dominating uh, with his wrestling. I mean, it, and I don't think so much of him getting him on the ground, just con- controlling him where he's yeah. at and where the fight's taking place. And then taking him down when he needs to grind him out. You know, I'm not trying to downplay uh, Masvidal, his uh, ground game. But, I mean, Ben Asker, man, is a big, heavy dude. I mean, he got, he, he got that weird kind of body shape that's not, not, uh, not conventionally what, what you'd see on a great fighter. And I do think he's going to get his comeuppance. But looking at Masvidal's record and looking at his losses, uh, I just I don't think he's the guy to do it, man. And, uh, and I do love the dude, but I think a lot of his style – We'll play into uh, we'll play into to Askren. Yeah, I, I don't think, and I think he wants it too much, man. I think he wants wants to whoop this dude's ass so bad that he's not going to be able to to be as disciplined as we've seen him be at times. I, I think I think he will resort to uh, to coming forward and just wanting to put a hand on him, and and I think that uh, that plays into what Ben Askren wants to do. So I think Askren got really lucky in that Lawler fight. To be honest with you, man, I think Lawler would have had his number. Oh yeah, spiked on his head, uh, and then that grinding pain, brutal, right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was just you know he he made a he made a momentary lapse in judgment. We've seen it before. I mean, you know, remember when Chris Weidman was uh, deciding to throw that whatever kind of you know hook kick or whatever the hell you'd call that kick that he threw shit. on? Uh, call that shit. Yeah, I mean, it's some lazy ass <laughs> fucking lazy ass bullshit. I've seen I've seen my you know seven year old throw a better kick than that. <laughs> but you know, yes, I mean, shit happens, you yeah, know, and. Yeah. Uh, and I do, I do think that uh, Askren is is nowhere as good as he thinks that he is, and that some other people think that he is. And and uh, he'll uh, he'll catch a beating, but it's not going to be in this fight. <clears throat> Fair play, man. Finally, Matthew, how about you? Your thoughts on this uh, welterweight contest? Sir? I think it's a fight that will sneak under the radar a lot, and I think that's going to happen with John Jones on the card. Uh, obviously, Masvidal coming off that stunning KO of Till, Askren undefeated, but in that Lawler fight, he was hurt, man. And I, I personally thought for a second he was out. I thought the arms went limp Same. when Lawler was ground and pounding him. Yeah. I, I, I thought he was out. And I think maybe another referee may have jumped in if they're a bit more eager. So like Kev, I thought uh, Askren was lucky. And we come off of that fight still not really knowing how Askren can handle like a long UFC fight. We, we don't know because it wasn't a definitive end, you know. So... I think, you know, he dived in early. He got a beating. He got hurt against Masvidal. Will it happen? <sighs> Again, like Kev, I, I don't think so. Uh, Masvidal is one of these guys who sort of UFC builds up and he has quite a lot of big fights on his record. He beats some of them occasionally. Like, you know, Cerrone was a good win. Till, obviously. But then he'll lose to Meyer. He'll lose to Stephen Thompson. So I don't think Masvidal is <clears> the <throat> guy to, to win. I think we will have a clearer picture if Askren is as good as he's built up to be after this fight. So I think Askren will win and I think it will be pretty uh, dominant, but yeah, I don't think Masvidal is the guy to beat him, but I don't think Askren will be this 
Khabib like figure in the future. I don't think he will be. I think somebody will stop him, but it won't happen in this fight. <clears throat> it's interesting what you're saying about like a Khabib. I know you mean when you say that, and but a lot of people just think wrestling and and, and mauling go hand in hand, and it's kind of like uh, when I think of asking wrestlers, I kind of what what you're saying, Kev. Like you know, get get a waist lock, get a body lock, press against the cage, and you know, do the takedown in, in his own good time, make it his fight and. Styles make fights, and that's I can't see it any other way, man. I see Masvidal getting frustrated as the fight wears on, and 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 asking him wearing on him. I hope not. I hope, I hope there's something more interesting than that. Let's say, but um, it's, it's that's why we love MMA, man. I mean, it's Christ that nearly caused the breakup in uh, Victor's house. So yeah, I mean, anything can anything can happen <laughs> in the old uh, mixed martial arts world. But I mean, so many great fights on this card, and I'm, I'm sure we'll get to the like, like so Sanchez and Kiez, um who we got uh, Rocco, Blankovic, all of this, and and sort of fan questions. But for the time being, let's look at co main event. Um, because we've got obviously Holly Holm here. Uh, I, I mean, Holly Holm. When I look at Holly Holm and Chris Cyborg, the the, the soft the the, the flavours going into that fight was technique versus power. And there's the, the way the UFC, from what I've seen, the way the package in this fight, it's it's very similar. But but Cyborg and Nunes, they're they're completely different fighters, man. And Nunes's power seems to have come later in her career. I didn't I didn't see it against Kat Singano. I didn't see it until you know probably Ronda Rousey. Maybe I was just a bit ignorant, but she, I mean, no doubt she has got power. We saw what she did to Cyborg, but I still think it makes for an interesting fight. And I think home could have a number here, man. I, I, I don't know. I, I want to hear you guys' thoughts. Let's start with Kevin on this one. Kevin Nunes versus Holm. Who you got, sir? Yeah, I'm with you, man. I think this is definitely a different uh, different type style matchup because of what Amanda Nunes brings to the table. Uh, you know, kind of when you think of Holly Holm, you think of her uh, circling back and, uh, and catching people with counters, you know, and kind of fighting her fight. Well, I mean, the... Uh, what Amanda Noon's been doing to people, and that that shit can't happen, you know. I just can't, don't see it any other way besides Amanda Noon's just bulldogging, bulldozing through her like mm-hmm. she's been doing to everybody. I mean, it, it's a it is a, quite a run that she has been on, and I don't see any reason why she should let up. I mean, Holly Holm, you know, she is uh, she's lost four out of her last six fights. She's two and four in her last six, and Damn. you know, three of those were at uh, featherweight, but. And I don't know, man. And she's getting up there in years. You think? And I was thinking about this in the. Uh, I, I didn't ever mention it, but in the Masvidal and Ben Askren fight. I mean, that nineteen and zero that Askren's holding. That's a that was a pretty easy nineteen and zero, man. He cruised through that. And you look at Masvidal and all these all these fights and all these wars that he's had. And same thing with Holly Holm, man. You take into account the thirty uh, something fights that she had boxing, uh, and and then add in what she's done and, and the age that she's at. And let's not forget that it wasn't too long ago that she kind of had one foot out the door, and I'm not going to do this forever and wants to have kids eventually and shit. And uh, Amanda Noons, obviously, uh, you know, not looking to have uh, children in the traditional sense, and uh, she's she's focused very much on fighting. And the it it, it has shown. She is, she is definitely uh, as peak as any athlete I've ever seen uh, compete in the cage at the moment. And uh, this, is, uh, this is a fight, honestly. Holly Holm shouldn't even be in this fight. You know, the the rankings and the way they're they're kind of doing this is a joke, but they're trying to make the most money and put a name in there. Uh, I don't think she belongs in there, and I think uh, I think it will show, man. It, it, even as much as you want to kind of wishful thinking and think, oh, that she pulls off this other upset, mm-hmm. makes her fight her fight. Nah, man, this chick is all going to be all over her from the opening bell, and it is not going to last long just like – uh, the last several times we've seen her in the cage. Yeah, I, mean, I hear what you're saying, man. A lot of a lot of people have said that to me as well. You know, how does she deserve a title shot? But I remember Kev, and I'm sure you do too. When when Home got the the shot against Ronda Rousey, a lot of people were like, "Well, how the f-? she said?" I think she had like one, maybe two fights in the UFC, and they, they both went to decision. They weren't exactly setting the heather light, and it was like, "Well, how does this girl get in just because of her boxing credentials?" But then we saw what she did to Ronda. Obviously, completely different fight. No nice to Ronda, but um, I don't know, man. And that that was that was the deal. I, I I mean, she was brought in specifically to be a setup fight for Ronda Rousey. They were running out of names. They were just throwing everybody at her, kind of like true. what they're doing to John Jones now. And uh, yeah, so you know that that's uh, that 
it's it's definitely a name recognition deal that's 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 getting her this fight, man. Being, I mean, I just can't I can't see it uh, any other way. I mean, she hadn't fought in the division in a, in a while and and uh, hasn't had an impressive record. But you know, I, I could I could be wrong, man. Maybe she'll surprise everybody. She definitely she's definitely done it before. That's true, man. Yeah, man. She's got that on her side. Um, Victor, how about you? Nunes versus home uh, and new or and still for you, sir. Um. To keep it short for right now, I'll just say and still. Um, there's many things that I actually think are in Holly's favor, but it's not so much that there are things that are in her favor. It's just plenty of unknowns. Um, she's coming off a long layoff, uh, one of the longest in her career, but given her age, I think that could be a benefit to her. Um, of course, Nunes is coming off that spectacular KO of Cyborg where she got hit like once. So, I mean, she didn't really take damage in that. She's coming down. She's coming back down in weight. That's another thing that I think may uh, play a, a factor in favor of Holly. Holly's gone out to 145 a few times now, and she's always seemed to be good with weight, whether it's at 35 or 45. And um, I don't know, Nunez. Who knows how disciplined she was? Um, I, I know she takes it seriously, but given her some of her cardio issues in the past, I, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe. Something goes wrong. She has a tough weight cut. I mean, God, God help her if she doesn't make weight. Then that's going to be all kinds of problems. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm. I'm actually going to write a story about this later on in the, in the week. I haven't done my tape study or anything yet, so this is just kind of things I'm knocking off of the top of my head here. But um, yeah. The what you were saying earlier, John, is that 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 Nunez wasn't really a knockout puncher. She's basically always been a knockout puncher. She was always just really reckless. She knocked out Julia Budd in strike force and knocked her like out cold, oh, but wow. she was just winging shots. Yeah. She, she was, a uh, she was kind of like very Diego Sanchez ish in, in her strike. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But now it, the thing is the crazy thing about Nunes is that she doesn't look like very imposing. She's not even that muscular, but she has a very lanky frame and I think that's the main reason of why she's able to put girls out like that is that she's learned how to re- use her reach. Right. She always hits girls, you know, at that snapping part of her punches and kicks. And, uh, yeah, she's learned to use that reach very well. Uh, Holly's a, a long fighter, but she, you know, trudges forward with those punches, those one-two high-kick combos that are very predictable. One thing I want to say for Holly is that she really surprised me in the Megan Anderson fight, and it shows that she can grapple. It's a different story with Nunes because she's a black belt, so that's not going to be an easy task. But mm. if she can implement some kind of clinching, some kind of uh, dirty boxing against the fence, if she learned what she did against um, against the Megan Anderson, the one thing I said after that fight is like the whole you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, that's bullshit because <laughs> Holly learned very well. Yeah. But it's going to it's gonna take a lot of discipline for her to do that. If she can do something like that, she could win. But that's basically it because pure kickboxing match, she's not going to win. Pure grappling match, she's not going to win. And uh, as of to this point, I haven't seen anything of her to prove that she can do it. So by default, I'm, can, I'm just going to have to go with Nunes for now. I, can, I will pick – I will might change my pick – later on in the week or in my podcast but as of right now that's what i'm thinking fair play man finally matthew your thoughts on the the women's uh, bantamweight title on the line what's your thoughts sir uh i think nunez will retain uh you know holmes had one big win against rousey obviously but since then she's two and four lost two title fights granted it's not at this weight but since then nunez has shot down all the doubters in my mind she's the best women's mixed martial artist and i know that people were sort of chucking that label at Ronda Rousey and then suddenly, you know, she dipped hugely in her career. And I think, I think Nunes may be getting to that point already where, you know, she is the champ champ and she's kind of getting that label by a lot of people now. So I think this one will be a good one to see if she can overcome that title now and then just keep going as she's been going. Home is a, is a big name and she's quite easy to get behind because I don't know, like using a, a a pro wrestling term, she's a very, you know, she's a very baby face kind of character. She's very, you know, work hard and things will happen for you. But I, I, just, I just can't see her beating Nunes. Nunes is so intense. She'll just walk forward. And, you know, she's just beating Chris Cyborg, who is, was the most devastating name in the whole of women's MMA in the world, yeah. probably. So it's it, it's hard, especially after a win like that, to go for home 
I, I don't want to, I almost don't want to say it, but it's almost, she was almost creeping into sort of overrated territory uh, because, you know, her record recently has been so bad and yeah, it's tough to go against Nunes here. It really is. Uh, if home, she's, she's great at kickboxing. She's great with her kicks. I mean, she could really weaken Nunes if she can keep distance and get the kicks going. But I think Nunes is so intense at walking <clears throat> forward and, and pushing it down and breaking it down, I think Nunes will get the win here. Yeah, I, I mean, I've got, I've got to concur that I think it will be and still. But one of the things that just came came to mind, and, and Victor, I want to get your thoughts on this, is um, if, if we just cast our minds back to the Cyborg fight, and Cyborg sort of initiated that, um, that Diego Sanchez, right, we're swinging here, and you saw a little smile on Nunes' face, like, oh, yes, we're going to war, and it was just like toe to and... You, you, albeit it was more refined technique uh, I, I'll, I'll take that from, from Nunes and, and then obviously devastating technique when she just face planted Cyborg but I do wonder if Holly Holm is on the outside you know the footwork the skipping around like she likes to do popping Nunes with a jab popping Nunes with a jab if she's constantly getting hit how do you think uh, Nunes responds to that do you think she will just get frustrated and want a war I, I don't think that she's going to get frustrated. I, I have no doubt that Nunes is going to get hit. Uh, I'm thinking it might be more um, uh, low kicks or uh, or body kicks. Um, I'm sure she might even take a head kick. I don't, I don't think it'll, it'll hurt her. But I think at distance she's going to encounter a few problems. Uh, I, I haven't looked at the reach. I'd like to see their reach to know. Because uh, I know she's shorter than Holly. But as far as the reach goes, there she's got to be... Uh, Equivalent to her, if not surpassing her, but I'd never no, noticed. I'd never noticed that. Like she must be deceptively long. Then maybe I'm just not she's seeing it. She's very long. Yeah. She's no, she's very long. She she reminds me of like uh, Chris Weidman. A lot of people don't think Chris Weidman's very long. And then you look at his reach; it's like an 81 inch reach. Right, it's like right, yeah, yeah. borderline John Jones territory. Yeah, like what the fuck? But um, yeah, no, I don't. I don't think she'll be frustrated because Holly's not a pressure fighter. And the thing with uh, Nunez, I think she has improved her gas tank. I mean, she went five rounds with Shevchenko and with Pennington. Granted, that was, those were like slow-paced fights, but uh, it sh- obviously it showed improvement. But if you can take a tour, that's when she – I think her problem is that she tenses up and she just starts um, – it maybe it's not a physical thing that she throws with all her might, but she just gets really in her own head and, and just starts going kind of crazy and fatigues herself. Uh, just mentally, yeah. but so I don't. I don't think that'll be the case. I, I think I can see Holly having having um, good moments, but the thing with Nunes is that she she's very she's a lot smarter with the striking too. That's a big reason of why she's so much better now. Is that she's very economic. She's not just winging punches. She's not just uh, going crazy. She she throws punches when when they're necessary, and her feints are very. Uh, very subtle. She doesn't throw these crazy feints to get crazy reactions. She throws big strikes, throws feints here and there, and then they start overreacting, the, the her opponents do, and then that's when she comes in with big counter shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. fair play, man. Okay, let's go to the main event then, and, and Dana's been talking about removing John Jones's loss on his record. I don't know how they're going to do that, but he faces a tough opponent in Thiago Santos, but i mean, I got to be honest, guys, a guy, he really should be beaten. I know Santos is in a bit of a run here, especially moving up from middleweight. We spoke about this a lot in the podcast. Um, depending on how Steepy and Cormier goes, this is what I've got, the feeling I've got going on. Depending on how that fight goes, I feel the stage is set here for Jones and Cormier at heavyweight uh, MSG, which I'm sure is uh, annually in November now, isn't it? So that, that, that's, with, that's if all things play out right, I think that's the way this is going, but... You know, it's MMA, man. Anything can happen. Let's see the panel's thoughts. We'll start with Matthew this time. Matthew, your thoughts. Jones, I mean, does he walk through Santos here? Does he walk through it is is an interesting question. Uh, will he win? Uh, yes. I think he is is far too well-rounded uh, to to be beaten by somebody who is very one-dimensional. <clears throat> um, while doing sort of, you know, research before the show, I... I saw that Santos is actually a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but obviously his career is based around his his striking. Um, so to beat somebody like John Jones, you've just, you've just got to equal him pretty much everywhere, I think, um, uh, unless he gets a lucky shot. And I, I don't want to take anything away from Santos. He's done well to get to this point, but you kind of feel like you get that feeling that Jones is just taking each guy in the division one by one by one, not easily, 
but he's not really breaking into too much sweat about it. Yeah. Um, you know, the way he controls the range as well is is going to be huge here because if you can't get close to Jones to hit him, that, that power is wasted on Santos, you know? Mm-hmm. So I, I I don't know if Jones will be able to finish Santos. He's a, he's a big guy. He's a thick guy. <coughs> but I think it'll probably go to a decision win for Jones. Uh, like I said, Santos can switch off anybody's anybody's lights out instantly, but you've got to get close to him first. So it's uh, it'll be interesting. And I like your prediction, John, about the uh, MSG card in November. If J- Jones will probably win this, it'll be interesting to see what happens with DC and, and Miocic. Uh, but it, it, it kind of feels like a fairy tale ending to the year. I know DC wants to retire this year, so it kind of makes sense for DC to get a. a a title defense in and then have that big, you know, third rubber match with, with John Jones. And then he can, you know, walk off into the sunset saying, well, Jones is just better or he can walk off and go, I finally beat him. So mm-hmm. John Jones win. John Jones win for sure, man. Kev, floor is yours, my friend. <laughs> is that a foregone conclusion? Then maybe give me some of your thoughts on, on another fight with Cormier, mate. Well, absolutely. It's a foregone conclusion, John. I mean, <laughs> Talk about John Jones. The deal about this card in its, its entirety is that uh, you got two, two of, if not the best uh, fighters in the women's and the uh, hit men's in the history of this sport. So, you know, that's enough to tune in. But Tiago Santos shouldn't be getting a shot at John Jones, man. <laughs> as far as the fight's going to go, I mean, it's going to go whatever way John Jones wants it to go, man. We, we talk about this all the time. Yeah. The guy who fights the guy that uh that makes you fight his fight john jones is the best best at it best you ever seen so you know is tiago santos gonna land a bomb nah man i mean he, john jones will stay at his range do what do what he wants to do i mean you could see this thing go all five rounds like you took anthony smith or uh or you could see uh if, if uh santos engages too much he will he's gonna get stopped and uh, you know, as far as wanting to see DC and John Jones, man, I'm I'm kind of right along the lines of what what my man John Jones is saying. He's beat him twice. I mean, th- there's no reason for us to watch this a third time. He's not going to go up to heavyweight. I really don't think it's going to happen. I mean, he has a, uh, I wouldn't say he has business to take care of down here, but I mean, he's comfortably making the weight. It would be a bad idea to transition at this point in his career when the guy's still so young, got so much ahead of him. I mean, go up to heavyweight when you're ready to go up to heavyweight. Fight down here and make your money while you can. I mean, there's still Dominic Reyes. You know, he's he's 11-0. and 0. I'm not sure how much uh, if Johnny Walker, if he had uh, a loss or uh, not too long ago, I want to say. No, uh, it was his celebration that was a loss. That's what happened. Is that, yeah, that's what happened. He, he fucked himself up doing the worm. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But, I mean, he's a, he's a character, you know, shit. Yeah, man, I like him. John Jones can fight another time this year. He said he wants to fight three times next year. <laughs> I mean, there, there's people out there for him to fight. He doesn't need Daniel Cormier. Let his little punk ass retire in uh, November. And quit bringing this shit up, man. If he wants to fight John Jones, <laughs> it's kind of like, hey, man, I'll, I'll I'll tell you, like Conor McGregor. You know, he lost it. He lost at a uh, the at welterweight against uh, uh, Diaz, right? And yep. he wanted to fight him against welterweight. If you want to beat him, come down there and fucking and beat him where you where where you lost to him at. You know, and John Jones does not need Daniel Cormier. I mean, I I cannot reiterate this enough. He does not. <laughs> And uh, Daniel Cormier needs John Jones. And, that, and, that, and I mean, hell, he don't really need him anyways. And he's just going to get his ass knocked out if they fight again any, any damn way. I, I don't need to see all the hype and all the bullshit. I'm, I'm done with DC. Let him, let him retire. You know, this, <laughs> this never was the DC era. DC was, DC was just a side note in the John Jones era. That's it. And that's how, that's how we'll be looking at it 10 years from now. There'll be some other – there'll be another guy that comes along – that does something uh, similar to, uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm going off the rails here. But, <laughs> but come on, Kev, you got to give DC's props. I mean, as John Jones aside, I mean, the guy's a phenomenal fighter, though, right? He's just not John Jones. Yeah. I mean, that, that's that's it. You know, he's not John Jones. Uh, you know, as far as he's not the things that I don't like personally that he does, man. I mean, yeah, he's a great fighter. I love his commentary. And, uh, you know, he's like, uh, Pauly Malignaggi said he's retiring after he caught that beating in the bare knuckle fight. And I said, oh, well, you know, yeah. he's not necessarily retiring because I probably still got to listen to his ass on Showtime every now and then. <laughs> but DC, come retire and talk all you want, man. I, I love it when he is uh, not so much uh, uh, 
uh, in the studio, but when, whenever he's calling fights, he gives you more insight than uh, than any other commentator could can, uh, could ever on uh, on wrestling. Yeah, he has a way that he explains things that someone that doesn't know shit about anything, uh, which I fall into sometimes, he he, uh, he can help you out. Yeah, man, he's good. He's good at breaking it down for sure. And um, Victor, we we saw how easily we spoke about it. Um, Jones dispatch Gustafson, man. That was another one that comes to mind. I think it's fair to say he took his foot off the gas with uh, the Smith fight, but still got the job done, man. This uh, Is this fight with Santos here, is it Jones' fight to throw away? Well, I just love what Kevin has said, that this is a foregone conclusion. I'd love to see him on, like, you know, you see these big shows on, like, ESPN, and, like, they talk about, oh, on round tables and stuff. Like, oh, Bro, this wanna... is why they fight. We never know, yeah. Jones. But Kevin's like, yeah, he's going to win. We don't even have to do this shit. <laughs> and it's really not a question. I mean, look, you know. And, and I'm like, can he land a lucky shot? And I, said, and I said, yes, when I was talking, fuck no, he can't, man. I mean, you seen what Gustafson put on him. There ain't no fucking chance he's landing any kind of shot, let alone the lucky one that's gonna that's gonna uh, knock John Jones cold out, man. He could take some punishment. Ke- Kevin is as sure that John Jones will win as he is that the sun will rise tomorrow. Yeah, Maybe man. even more. Yeah, man. For <laughs> sure. Yes, more. I would say definitely more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, that was funny. But no, um, yeah, I, I I gotta go with Jones here as much as I don't want to. Um, I've been. I've been kind of singing Tiago Santos' uh, uh, praises lately. I was really, really, really impressed with the Jan Blankovic fight because he showed an ability to counter, which he's basically never shown ever in his fighting career. And honestly, if this was anyone else, including DC, who I actually do like, if this was any other light heavyweight, I would probably say that he was probably going to knock him out. The thing with John Jones is that he never rushes and does – dumb shit like that had i at least seen that a few times in his career i'd probably have some hesitancy but you know i, I, I <laughs> he's been talking so much that his boxing's improved and stuff and then in the in the what was the last fight with uh, anthony smith he yeah. threw like this wild haymaker totally off balance it, it's boxing is still not good but it doesn't matter because his kicks more than make up for it and uh i think it's just going to be hard for tiago santos to get in range I think he will go berserk at one point and probably clip him. Uh, I don't know if he'll hurt him, drop him, stagger him. I, I don't know, but I, I just don't know if he can keep that up, keep him some kind of relentless aggression and more than anything, precision to actually put a hurting on Jones. So, yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna have to go with Jones here. I more than anything want and expect a fun fight. I, I want it to be... More fun than the Anthony Smith fight, which isn't asking for a lot. But, you know, I, I don't think that's going to happen because Tiago Santos is a, a crazy, daring fighter. And Anthony Smith, he kind of showed that he was, but I understand why he kind of froze up in that point. But Tiago Santos, I think he'd, he's willing to take a knockout loss or submission loss before he takes a boring decision loss. So I think it'll be a fun fight for however long it lasts. But, yeah, I think John Jones is going to gonna keep that belt. I mean, I got to concur. It's nothing but Jones for this one, and and then kick back and see what happens for MSG. I mean, I, I I'm obviously I'm open to. I'm not that. I'm not that stupid that I know anything can happen in MMA, but it's John Jones we're talking about in it, and there's nothing that's making me think that anything else is going to change. But guys, fine. Time for think, no. Think- go for it, mate. Oh, sorry. Uh, just uh, regarding the MSG card, I think the only thing that DC has for his argument is the fact that the last fight between Jones and DC got ruled out as no contest because of Jones's uh, popping. Uh, so you can, that's the only argument I think DC would have hearing everybody else, just, you know, chat about the fact that he, John Jones has beaten DC twice. Yes. But I think DC just has that one argument to fire back. I, I want to add something here too. I, I just have a question for Kevin. Kevin, did you did you spike Sean O'Malley's drink with uh with Austrian or whatever to show that pulsing is real? Like, see, it's not just John Jones. The fuck? I wish I had those type of connections. <laughs> yeah, <'cause laughs> if you guys don't know Sean O'Malley, he was gonna fight on this card and he got pulled yeah, not by I'm... Osada. Yeah, he got pulled not by Osada, but but by the Nevada Commission. Because the drug that he tested for last year is showing up in the system again, just like the whole John Jones deal. Ah, uh, the old so Pico Gram. Yeah, in, in a tiny he did amount. It to prove a point. 
I'm pretty sure we're talking apples to oranges on this. I cannot confirm it, and I'm not an expert. I just listen to what the experts say <laughs> and go with that. <laughs> you know, when, you have, when you have a question about something you don't know, it's kind of like that old movie, that line off Snatch. You know, you call somebody that knows about these sort of things. <laughs> <laughs> what movie that is. Guys, right. time for my final part of the show and some fan questions. Uh, just a reminder to the panel, one rule, don't wait your turn. The floor is yours. I was going to start with Facebook, but um, my man Kevin Jones is sent in a question now you've you've jumped kindly graciously jumped in for our boy Don Wilson. Um, Kev, I've taken the question out, but if you if you still want to pitch it, it's it's all yours, brother. I say fired away. I I, did, I put a little thought into this deal. Go for it. Well, uh, oh hell, dude, I, I don't get it all written down, but we got we just got experts. I mean, uh, we, we were just talking about it. There's all sorts of experts, scientists, you know, athletic commissions. Everybody's saying that this is a uh, you know a new thing in their testing that they can pick up picograms of uh, m3 metabolites or some bullshit you know whatever they're saying it makes a whole lot of sense to me even though i don't know anything about it <laughs> i just don't understand why everybody is uh still down on john jones about this deal man i mean we just saw yoel romero get a fucking fat ass paycheck oh yeah from uh from the tainted supplement company that he has so why is it so fucking far-fetched that uh that the same type of thing is happening to other fighters that there is tainted supplements the companies are uh, cutting corners, and they might not even know what the fuck they're putting into this shit. There's yeah. it's it's a tricky uh, tricky thing going on right now. But one thing I do know is John Jones is back in full effect. The fucking guy is probably the most busiest man in prize fighting today, and uh, he is going to set him up and knock him down. <laughs> yeah, he, he, just, he, 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 he makes it so he makes it so easy for people to hate him. I think he just embraces it so much that. He just makes it so easy. But I think on this podcast in, in the in the past, I've said many things about Jones and DC and the whole goat argument between the two and others. But I think in Octagon only, John Jones is by far the greatest of all time. The way that he can adapt to any situation is great. But he just makes it so easy to hate him. I think that's what it is. <laughs> I, I think in, in particular with this drug stuff, it's it's hard with him because he's popped twice before. And that's what really puts it uh, for me. This is why I always talk shit about him. It's probably mostly because of you know hitting a pregnant lady and all the all the terrible shit he's done outside the the cage. But as far as like, in cage, like she was pregnant before that happened. <laughs> he didn't know, obviously. I'm sure if he. I'm I mean, sure if he would have picked out Kevin, somebody else, I'm sure she wouldn't have been pregnant, bro. I'm sure if he knew Kevin. <laughs> God, oh my God! Um, Should have had that yeah. baby on board sign, huh? He would have just pumped on those brakes. None of this shit. Oh yeah, I mean, even if, that's why they have the sign. <laughs> oh God! Something's making the clip show out of that little dude. <laughs> oh, all of this. This is the clip show. Well, I mean, I get. I know what you're saying, Matthew. Like, there's so many things. Uh, oh, it's funny I say. There's so many things um, to dislike, and they're all outside the cage, right? And like we said, yeah, hitting the pregnant lady and the pop drug test, but the pop drug test as well. Like UFC 200 main event, big deal, man. Any other fighter and Dana saying bye bye. You know what I mean? So it's this special treatment he gets as well. That doesn't really endear him to fans. There's, a, there's that and the mix with everything else. It's, that's why he gets the treatment that he does, I think. And then, he, he's, know, he, is, he, he is different now, though. He, he, has, he has kind of changed a little bit, but I forget which fight it was. But in a press conference with John Jones, uh, I think it was with the DC, the, two, the second fight, he turned around to DC and said, I beat your ass after a weekend on cocaine alone. It was just that one comment. It was almost like he showed no remorse for anything that he'd done. That that's my one sort of just thing that I hate about him that he said that. But he has shown to be a bit more remorseful now, and he does show to be a bit more of a reformed character and a lot more focused on on his fight game. You know. Yeah, I, I can never buy that shit with him. Same, it's, nah, it's, I don't buy always, either. He's a good yeah. politician. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he'd he'd be great at this shit. And you know what? I I wish he did run because Kevin might actually vote against Trump. In this <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll I'll sum it up, man. Hate is always more loud than love. You know what I mean? And uh, <laughs> equating it on baseball terms, there's a lot of people that hate the Yankees out there. They still sell the most baseball caps at any fucking club in the major leagues. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's yeah. See. It, it, but, but just the last thing on it is just I, I think the big thing with him as so far as the, why people doubt him is that is is the previous two drug tests because I, I, this is a shocker here but I, I'm not really giving a lot of room for Jones that he's innocent he's done something in his past 
at one point or another. But the thing is with Usada, they're, they've been so sketchy. The only thing I believe that Usada's done right is honestly catching TJ Dillashaw. Because that seemed like it was like, you know, with a, with a silver bullet, like, bam, you, you got caught. EPO, especially with Nowitzki, he knows about that. You're not going to fool him. But everything else, Osterine, peptides, trace minerals, all this shit that's coming out. Like, I don't know about any of that shit. And it seems like they're digging way too deep in something that's probably not even necessary. So, yeah, John Jones has maybe caught a bad hand. But I also feel like he's done some fishy shit, too. So it's kind of half and half. I'll at least give him that. Yeah, play him on. And well, we'll it's, go. It's, the, oh. it's the first two letters in USDA, man. United States, the government got a hand in it. Uh, I don't I don't know if we should trust it, man. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't comment on that, but I know my government's corrupt as fucked as well, so for what it's worth. <laughs> uh, Facebook, uh, Jean J. Antonine says, uh, who, who's speaking about uh, Dana White trying to remove John Joe's uh, loss on his record there. He says, he is undefeated. Tell me one fight he actually lost, lost. He got disqualified. He didn't get beaten, did he? Oh, thoughts? Loss, loss. Sounds like that dumbass term champ champ everybody's saying <laughs> now. <and> <laughs> I mean, the only thing you can kind of say is the, the, the first Gustafson fight was close. I know some people say that uh, he lost that fight, but I think those people are really, really biased. I mean, even me, who don't like John Jones, and I was going for Gustafson there, I can admit that, that he lost, but it was close. But, um, yeah, no, they, he's aside from that one, it's not been a competitive fight. The, D, the first DC fight was okay. Really not that competitive, though. And the second fight was to a point and then you know we saw what happened and then yeah. that's kind of just yeah yeah well it's it's kind of like it's kind of like john jones being uh you know stripped of titles over some bullshit the uh he, he's the champ always been the champ didn't need to have the belt around his waist the whole time man and uh you know the uh <clears throat> this uh the, this uh this notion that he that he has a loss on his record i mean he was beating his ass in that fight i mean we all watched it there's fucked up shit that's the uh, decisions that happen every day, every, every day in the world. There's a fucked up decision in a fight that happens. And, you know, we, we just move forward like it's not there. I mean, the UFC is actually the best at doing that. I mean, they'll see a shitty decision. Dana White will say fucking at the post-fight press conference. Like, is he still in line for a towel shot? Yeah, we're just going to act like that shit didn't happen, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, that's how they treat it, right? I mean, I guess so. Um, Tom Heffernan on Facebook. Do UK fans avoid the new BT Sports pay-per-view package to make a stand, considering we are already paying for BT Sport? Also, MMA isn't as big here, and I fear pay-per-view will stifle it, losing casual fans. Nah. It, I, I think, you know, it's it's how often do we get these numbered pay-per-views anyway? We, we get them every couple of months, maybe once a month, it's, it, it doesn't matter. I think, I, I think I've seen a lot of people on Twitter say that they've already ended their subscription. It's like, well, cool. You're either going to lose out or you're going to find a really dodgy online stream where it's a horrible quality. I think real MMA fans personally, if they can afford it, they'll pay for it. If it's a good card, if not, you don't have to pay for it. You know, I, I, I don't think it will affect that much. Um, and I think, people are looking to be really offended by it, but I'm not too bothered personally. Um, I'm, I'm just going to pay. Got, if, it's good, I got a, if it's a really good card. I got a thought and a question on it. I mean, uh, you know, the, the, the question is, is why, uh, well, well, first, first of all, the thought, man, I mean, you're not going to boycott anything. I mean, like you just said, people are going to pay or they're not going to pay. Welcome to, you know, wanting to watch this company that, that is worth $4 billion. They need to recoup some of this money some way. And then the uh, the question I had for you guys over there was, I mean, it's just, uh, I don't know, coming from over here, I kind of, I keep an eye on numbers and stuff because I've, I've always just kind of business minded. How many people are y'all uh, show up to these shows whenever UFC does a big show over there in uh, London? You know, how, how many people pack in that place? Oh, it does well, man. It sold out uh, within like the hour for when it was here in, in Glasgow, in Scotland. It does well, yeah, it sells out very, it does well in Manchester. It sells out very quickly. Yeah. Yeah, it sells out very quickly, but I think a lot of, I think an argument against it is that a lot of the tickets end up on resale sites. Um, but if you look at the attendance anyway and look at the actual pictures of the arena, it's always packed. Yeah. And I think for UK UK fans, I think fill out the arena quicker. Like in in some cards in the in the states, you don't see people really go into the arena until sort of the main card. But UK events usually have a quite a full arena, even for it's the prelim. Kind of- it definitely depends on the venue over here. I mean, in Vegas, people are showing up for the main event only. I mean, the oh, majority right. of them. 
and and you you have a car in, in Dallas. I mean, everybody's gonna gonna you know be there pretty much on time. There will be some people showing up late. But now my question was really, I, I don't know, you know, what these. I don't. I'm not familiar with the venues over there and how many people they hold. And because that that's a, that's the number. I mean, you're doing money at the gate and you're doing money on pay per view. And you know, I, I I don't know as much about the markets. I was just trying to understand. I mean, what it. Whenever I hear that it's not as popular over there in the states, I mean, I guess you know, I don't know exactly what that means. Cause I got a pretty good feel on it, watching people come in and out of the bars. And uh, I mean, it, it's been uh, it's been dipping uh, around here, man. I mean, it used to be that you it uh-huh. one in one out at the bar whenever you'd go over there. And uh, I remember when Demetrius Johnson and John Jones fought on the same cart, man. There was never a line at the door, mm-hmm. no cover. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I, mean, I can't speak for the bars. I don't think, of, but I know like kind of attendance is packed, and it, and it, it does all the big cities in the UK. You know, Liverpool, Manchester, London, the Glasgow here in Scotland, um, and and like Matthew says, man, there, there's there's rarely an empty seat in the house. But that's for an attendance. In terms of uh, exposure and media, I mean, we've got this British Broadcasting Corporation, right? We need to pay a fee, and and they control all the shit. This this is like um, this is like a government based thing, and that, and it's so everything has to go through them. So if 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 they're not into it, which the BBC aren't, they don't really follow it. Then it's it's hard. It's a, it's like it's still quite underground in terms of uh, media exposure. The only way you're going to get it is on BT Sport. And if BT Sport didn't pick it up, fuck knows who else was going to. It probably would have went back to like Matthew said, man, finding a dodgy online stream. It's the it's the media exposure part of it that makes it still quite not as popular. Whereas in attendance, I can say that there's plenty of people still showing up for it. Yeah, Kev, just to give you an actual number. Um, so the fight night between Till and Masvidal, the attendance was 16,000 and the total gate amount was 2.4 million, which was 400,000 more than UFC 238 was. So, and the attendance was more. So for a fight night over here, we get a bigger gate amount and a bigger attendance. Right on. In London. Fair play, man. So... <laughs> I mean, that's big numbers for sure. It's just the consistency of it. I'm not buying the pay-per-view. No, there's no chance. I cancel my BT Sport. I'm one of those guys, I guess. But anyway, let's move on. We've got Brian Lacey who's asking, if Rockhold loses on Saturday, where does that leave him in both the middleweight and the light heavyweight divisions? He's he's just going to be a light heavyweight. He's, you know, he as I've always middle? said, yeah, you're right. middleweight's going up to light heavyweight. Just just fucking stay, man. And and you know what? I wouldn't put it past uh, Jan. Jan's a really, really good dude. Um, you know, he's he's not to be fucked with on the floor. Yes, I know Luke's a monster down there, but uh, yeah, um, Jan Jan's crafty and he he's pretty crafty with his striking too. I, I would not be surprised at all if Luke wins. I uh, if uh, Luke loses, I'm sorry, and I think it'll be close if he loses. Uh, it might be close if he wins as well. But yeah, if he if he loses, they'll give him Eric Anders. They'll give him some other random dude that he can most likely easily beat. Misha Serkinov. Justin Ledead, and he'll be back on his way. I think the UFC could do with Rockhold uh, getting a win and putting a few wins together in the division, to be honest, because I think, Kev, you said there's a few people for John Jones to fight, but to my head, I think there's only about two, really, who in the in the top 15 who could realistically fight John Jones and, ha- and have a case for a title shot. So if Rockhold... Luke Rockhold's quite a, a big name. It's quite a well-known name, especially in the world of MMA. Um, so I think the UFC could really do with a new challenger coming into the division who already has quite a well-known name, you know? Mm-hmm. Luke, my, in my opinion, man, Luke Rockhold is spent. The cat, the dude, the dude is spent, man. And, and I, I think I've, I think it, it's been a little bit, he's, he's not going to be able to compete at the top of, uh, of any division. I don't think middleweight or, or, uh, or light heavyweight. I mean, I think uh, I think John Jones has just just run over him, but I do think you got a good point that it's a it's a name, and you're right. There's a, you know, if you line up, like I said, man, I think Dominic Reyes is is right in there. He wants a shot. I mean, he's young. Put him in there. Put him, uh, you know, take that O off his record. Maybe they can fight again sometime later down the road. Uh, Johnny Walker's definitely a character. I mean, I think you throw him in there, and, and by that time those two fights happen, we're gonna be you know a third of the way through uh, next year probably. And uh, it will any of his next two fights. So, yeah, I mean, they they can definitely generate a name like that and uh, and put some hype behind the fight. But uh, it's John Jones show, baby. (laughs) That's it. Hey, Brian follows up with them. If you were to pick one movie title to sum up the career of John Jones, which one would it be? Oh, on the spot. The greatest story ever told. There you go. 
<laughs> there you go. <laughs> like that, Vic. Yeah, I, I, I've um, uh, John mentioned this uh, before we went on air, and I've been thinking this whole time. I couldn't come up with nothing, so I give you props on that one. Uh, I came, I came up yeah. with it right after he said it on, on, the, <laughs> on the movie post. On the movie poster, you could have him, uh, you know, with his beard grown out, uh, standing on top of water. <laughs> Literally, Kev, Kev has given this way too much thought. I think. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm really quickly. Thing, but, well, I got a good idea. <laughs> That's brilliant, mate. Hey, let's see. Patrick McKinnon asks, "Who will Askren fight next after he wrestle Fox Masvidal?" <laughs> Well, that ain't gonna happen. No. <laughs> no. Um, well, I mean, obviously, if he wins, he's gonna be in for a title shot. If he loses, I I gotta assume it'd be the loser of Lawler Covington. I'm sure that'd be that'd be a hell of a uh, you know that's a hell of a sell right there. A rematch with Lawler, which everyone wants to see, or Covington, whom everybody hates even more than Askren, so you're just going to hate watch the fuck out of that one. <laughs> yeah, fuck yeah, you hit the nail on the head, man. Those three names is where it's at. I'd love to see him against Lawler again. Uh, the, the, uh, the promotion alone for uh, Covington versus Askren would be gold. And, uh, and, and yeah, man, I would love to see him get a beating from uh, Kamara Usman. Shit, why wait? He do so full of himself. He'd think, he think that 21-0 shit. After I do think he beats Masvidal, you know, nothing's a given. But yeah, t- take that in there, Kamir Usman. How that guy's been looking? How he's hey, how he's fucking progressed? That, yeah, that's a, a monster. That's a real world people champion seem, right there. If you want to see what you're all about, get in there with that motherfucker. People seem to be completely forgetting the the former champ Tyron Woodley. Um, I think that'd be a great fight. I think they. I think Woodley and Askren had a little bit of uh, go between the two uh, before no, that, that, they lost the title. No, they're no, they're they are they are they're training yeah. partners, no, right? They would never oh, fight. okay. I thought they fought. Then I think they might have went to the same uh, college too, man. I mean, I, yeah, I know they've been around from, each other forever. Yeah, they're both from St. Louis. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't see that. But one hell one. yeah, I'd love to see it. Tyrone Woodley would beat that ass. That that's why the fight won't happen. He don't want to put that beating on his buddy. He's <laughs> <laughs> hey, pal. Uh, let's move to Twitter questions, then, guys. Before we wrap up, at Richie Richie eighty one, Joe Benavidez needs to shut up and realize the only UFC gold he'll ever touch is Megan O'Leary. So I didn't know those two were married Fuck. until this question was sent in. Man. Fuck that. <laughs> they, man, they, he's wrong on both accounts. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll just I'll leave it at that. Joseph Benavidez looked fucking great last night. <laughs> Nobody should be downplaying what the fuck he did, man. He he dominated, man. He looked great. I definitely think he could uh, give Henry Cejudo a run at that weight class right now. That'd be a great fight. I keep doubting him, and he keeps winning. So it's like, and then in the first fight, he won. But most people, including myself, thought Cejudo should have should have won. So I would favor Cejudo, but should Benavidez win? I wouldn't be surprised, man. He he keeps pulling it off. I don't know how, but ben, he's doing Benavidez it. looks to me like he has lost a step. But man, when it when it comes time. When he when he is in the in his zone, man, and he's fighting his fight, he, and he always seems to get there. You know the uh, when I, I said this when the division came out, it's funny. I was just mentioning on the show this morning that that you know this is still an issue. When they created the flyweight division, I said, man, them two guys are the best. Uh, Johnson and uh, Benavidez, they're the best in the division. They should just have them fight like a best of seven series over the next year and a half, and uh, then call it a day. And uh, and now they're still talking about getting rid of the division, but I mean Joseph Benavidez, the dude, the dude looked great, man. He's a he's a, uh, I mean he's constantly been number one to me. The guy's damn near been number one in the division, right behind Johnson the whole time until uh, till Henry Cejudo dethroned him. And uh, I mean there there was one point in time that he knew he wasn't ready to fight Johnson again, and now he feels like he's ready. The guy's been around forever, been paying his dues, and been winning. Uh, and I think uh, Joseph Benavidez earns a, de- definitely deserves a shot, has a chance of winning the fight, and maybe Megan Olivia is not that fine, anyways. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Boom. I, I, I'm more a Laura Sanko guy, but still, I, I'll give props to Olivia. <laughs> yes, yeah, good looking at all, but you know, she's TV ready. <laughs> Oh, brilliant. She's got that four heads going on, or is it an eight head? Uh, at J Lol S4, after last night, and now everyone is calling JDS washed up, these excuses never stop. Give cred- give Francis his credit and move on. Engano, main event at MSG for the heavyweight title. Ooh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Engano is just, man, 
and this is what I said on my podcast uh, um, this week, and it, it's true. I was like, all right, if he win, if he loses, we'll find something out. If he wins, and if he wins the way he's been winning in thirty seconds, a minute, mm-hmm. you know, knockout, we're back to square one. We literally don't know anything about Engano. Like he might as well be a UFC newcomer. We don't know anything about him. Aside from that, he doesn't have a good gas tank, which, big surprise, look how big the motherfucker is. Yeah. And he can't really wrestle, surprising, you know, not very surprising, given that he's a striker from Africa who's not really known for their wrestling. So we're back to square one. If, if, if you know, Stipe and, and uh, Cormier are going to go at it, and the winner of that fight should beat him. He, uh, Stipe already beat him, and I don't see why DC wouldn't. It's just like... People, I think people are really still mad about the Derek Lewis fight too. That still oh, doesn't help. So bad. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's like literally. See, even in that, he had a three round fight. We should be like, well, he's got a gas tank. We know he can wrestle. We know he can throw leg kicks. You know, we don't know shit. Nothing happened in that fight. So whether it's a three round fight or or a first round knockout, we know the same amount about him as we did three years ago. Is it don't just it's it's all, it's all, it's all, sorry, me on you go. It's it's almost like the Diego Santos sort of situation. Uh, You you know what he's known for. Uh, The minute you take him into deep waters and and take him past that round one and two and and take him down, that's it. And that's the way we predicted the the Jones-Santos fight. And that's probably how you predict the Nganu... Miocic slash DC fight in the future. Yeah, and Gano in, in certain name is is a bit like Shane Carwin for me. You know, at, at the first round it's terrifying. Beyond that, fucking, it's game over. We saw that at the Brock Lesnar fight, and it, okay, maybe maybe he's got, he's obviously got more grappling skills. Uh, Carwin has than than the Gano. Uh, Carwin had than and Gano has, but it's it's that uh, do or die in the first round, it? and then then it's a different fighter after that. Well, I think I'm going to agree and disagree with you guys. Two of the favorite, my most most favorite things to do on the show is to <laughs> defend and to uh, to clown, right. and uh, I like them both equally. <laughs> I think that y'all are right. You know, y'all are right about all these things. There's a lot of things that we don't know about Nagano, but we do know the one thing that we need to know: the fucking dude is dangerous. A blind man could be sitting ringside and tell you that this fucking guy is something else besides everybody else. Just the sound on his punches alone. He threw a shot last night. It was a fucking really wide fucking uh, right hook. And it hit uh, Santos in his right shoulder, man. So opposite side of his body from where the punch was thrown. And just the sound coming off him, hitting him in the shoulder. Sounded sounded different than, uh, than, you know, than some of the big guys when they throw a shot. And uh, it, it connect, uh, you know, right on right on the head or, or even on the gloves. I mean, I mean every, th- every shot he throws, it has a different sound to it. Mm. After the when the fight came on last night, I said, watch out, baby. This fight is going to go no more than a minute and a half. We went a minute and 11 seconds. And I said, man, he, he might only hit him with eight shots. He hit him with nine. The, that is all <laughs> you need to know. I that's mean, all, the, all the to. man is dangerous. Yeah. And if, if there's a chance he can do that in every fight and the record he's put together, the young age he's, he's at, Yes, give him another fucking title shot. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't know. Derek Lewis things in the memory though. It's still. <laughs> Do you know what it is for, <laughs> for me, man? Like I was trying my best to stay up for that pay per view, and I and I caught some forty winks. But my buddy stayed up. I was staying at a pal's flat. And I said, wake me up when that fight comes on because I do not want to miss. Out of all the fights, I do not want to miss that fight. And and yeah, the rest is history. Let's let's not let's not forget. Uh, and not to, not to badmouth my dude Derek Lewis from Houston, Texas, man, the black beast in this hoe. But <laughs> he he uh, I mean he uh, he has a he has a limited skill set, and he's been and he's uh, been struggling with back injuries. When you don't have a dance partner, it's hard to make a good fight. Yeah. And yes, I mean you can put a lot of blame on Naganu as well uh, for that fight being boring, man. I mean, I, and the other thing would say that you'd have to respect. The power that both these guys got, and sometimes that's how heavyweight fares go. But he was a he was a young man coming off a loss, and uh, admittedly was trigger shy in in the fight. People move on, man. Anderson Silva's had some off days. It's true, man. Absolutely true. Last one from Twitter, and before we wrap up, again, guys, and it comes from at Else for Elf, good friends of the show. She says, if Trump can set foot in North Korea and make history, then Santos can set a foot on the picogram of Jones and make history too. It's simple, people. And new. I'm not buying it, man. Uh, not not going to happen, is it? <laughs> Let's all be honest. Nah. 
it's not. Yeah, man. If 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 he wants to make history, maybe he should. You know, I, I don't know. Take a trip to the South Pole and and see how long he can stay there or, or something. I don't I don't know what hadn't been done, but <laughs> but uh, what what he's gonna attempt to do on Saturday, he's not gonna accomplish. Speaking speaking of North Korea, I was kept looking at at um, Joe B yesterday uh, at Joe Benavides. He was rocking that Kim Jong Un haircut, man. I was like, damn, that's straight up <laughs> Asian dictator haircut. Rocket man. <laughs> Yeah, yep. <laughs> that's it, man. That should be his new nickname. There you go. Hey, what do you have, guys? Yes, two thirty nine, just around the corner. What a night of fights we have lined up for this weekend. Looking forward to even more. Having heard your questions and hearing the thoughts of our panel tonight. Don't forget, we're back next week on the roundtable. We'll be reacting to UFC two thirty nine. Kevin Jones will be returning for that one. We've got John Ferguson of MMA Huddle and Mr. Bob Carson of the Carson's Corner Podcast joining us on the roundtable. But in the meantime, I'd like to thank our panel here today. Starting with Mr. Matthew Penny. Matthew, a massive thank you for your time, sir. Let our people know where to check out Purely MMA. Yeah, thanks for having me back on, mate. It's a pleasure to have you back on the podcast. Um, so you can catch me at Purely MMA on Twitter and purelymma.co.uk. Uh, the website isn't very active at the moment, but we're going to change that over the summer. And also, I'm going to be experimenting something a little bit different, and it's on Twitch twitch.tv you can catch me at Matt Penny PFC. I'm going to be experimenting with some live uh, commentary and discussion during live events nice. you can't show the picture of it actually happening but you can like show the commentary the audio so follow me on twitch.tv Matt Penny PFC. I'm going to do some commentary and discussion points so uh, thanks for having me on John and uh, here's to the next time pleasure my man to Kevin Jones Kev a massive thank you as always let our listeners know about the main event and uh, always a pleasure to get your time sir Always a pleasure, man. I, I miss it every uh, week that I don't get to do it. Uh, I will be back next week, as he said. So here's my plug. The main event is our show. We are live from 8 to 9 on Double T97.3 and Double T97.3.com. You uh, can catch on West Texas' only live boxing MMA show. If you didn't know, now you know. Keep up every week from 8 to 9. Finally, to Victor Vargas. Victor, a massive thank you to you, sir. And let everyone know where to check uh, iFox or Juice Podcast and all the good stuff you do online, my friend. Uh, thank you, John, as always. Thanks for having me. Um, you can find me at Twitter, uh, Juice, underscore, uh, Juice underscore MMA. You can find uh, at iFox with Juice also on, on Twitter. You should uh, follow that one because I sometimes forget to post the links on my own uh, Twitter account. So you might want to fo- follow that one for the podcast links we're also on MMA podca- uh, mmapodcast.com that's like an aggregator website it has a bunch of MMA websites almost anyone you can think of is there and um, yeah we're on uh, Stitcher iTunes Spotify anywhere you can find us and uh, keep an eye out especially on my social media uh, I-, I should be putting out a uh, an article this week about Holly Holm and Amanda Nunes so keep an eye out for that definitely check it out and if you've liked this podcast be sure to subscribe all the platforms, man. Just search from Martial Arts Chat. Follow us on Twitter at Martial Arts Chat, or you can like us on Facebook. It's facebook.com forward slash Martial Arts Chat. And I'm John Boy McElroy, and I'll catch you next time on the Martial Arts Chat podcast. <laughs>